All right. Well, why don't we get started? Uh, again, a very warm welcome to all of you that have joined us today for this webinar. My name is Gloria Sackham, and I'm the director of the Executive MBA National Program here at Smith School of Business. Uh, we're based in Kingston, Ontario, on the Queen's campus. And it's a real pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you a little bit about our executive MBA programs. So I'm going to talk about our two EMBA programs, the national program and our EMBA Americas program. And uh, today we're very fortunate to have a couple of alumni joining us. So we're going to hear from them. But our agenda for the session is really um, around these five bullet points. Um, including diving into both of the programs so that you know the difference between our two EMBA programs and which one may be best suited to what you're looking for and where you are at in your career. And then, of course, we'll talk about the admissions process, and uh, Alex Monday will join us for that part of the presentation. Um, our panel today includes Ryan and Mazin. Mazin will be joining us hopefully in a few moments. Um, and you'll see that they are graduates of our programs. And so, uh, Ryan, let's start with you to find out a little bit more around what you do, but a little bit about your story. You know, why did you want to do this EMBA program? And I know that timing is often a big factor when deciding to take a program. So even if you could cover that up for us, please. Yeah, absolutely. And and thank you so much, uh, Gloria, for having me. And, and thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, so my story uh, began, uh, I'm originally from Vancouver, I, I still live in Vancouver, but I, I lived in Calgary for, for four years, and this uh, EMBA Americas uh, program was, was uh, brought to my attention by one of my uh, colleagues, and um, I joined the information session back in 2016, but uh, work was a little bit different back then, and, you know, I was doing a lot of traveling, so I didn't have time, and then Moved back to Vancouver in 2019, and uh, obviously with the pandemic and the work from home, and you know the uh, the extra time that I had, I, I thought it was a great opportunity for me to go back to school and do this program in 2021. We just finished uh, we just finished our uh, last residential session about two weeks ago, so classes are done and uh, we have a, a couple more deliverables left but um, yeah for me I think it was you know M an MBA was always a, a goal of mine coming out of undergrad I finished my undergrad in 2008 had a, a background in economics and uh, work in finance and just thought that uh, you know having an, an, M an MBA and uh, gaining that experience will uh, will help me uh, you know move up the ranks uh, at my company. Excellent. All right. Good stuff. And uh, congratulations on almost being at the finish line. Just a few more assignments now. And yes. that's very, very exciting for you. Yeah, it's uh it's it's a great feeling. And uh, you know, with school, you always can't wait for it to be over. And once it's over, you kind of wish it never ended. So um, I made a lot of amazing friends, friends for a lifetime, and uh the networking in the program was just incredible. Mm, great. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So let us continue on with our slide deck here. There's lots of reasons why people choose to step into an executive MBA program. And you heard a little bit about Ryan's story, uh, but this slide really gives you a sense of some patterns that we see on the sun by way of career switching, career advancing, or perhaps you've got the idea to start a business and you want to formalize your business training and use the skills while you're in the program to build that business plan. We often see many individuals go on and start their own ventures as a result of our programs. If you've been to our website, you will have seen a lot of information there about how our programs work. And so we're going to hit some of the highlights in this webinar. Um, knowing that you're probably looking at the website, you're chatting with alumni, you're reaching out to us. And so really what we want to do is make sure that you have fulsome information. Um, and so keep asking those, asking those questions in the application process or even in the inquiry process around what makes our program different. Um, and you can see here that we've highlighted these six different components of our program that we're going to talk a little bit more in detail with Ryan. 
Now, the, the unique feature of our programs is that everyone is assigned to a learning team. So it limits the real world in that you're part of a team to accomplish a bigger task or goal. Teams in our world are anywhere between five to eight members large. And in Ryan's case, he was part of a Vancouver team where we have a physical boardroom environment. So we have these physical environments in major markets in Canada, but we also have uh, virtual team rooms for people who live in smaller working, uh, so live and work in smaller communities in Canada. But nonetheless, you'll be working together to complete these assignments in the program, half of which are team-based, the other half are individual. So everyone will be on a team and in either a physical or a virtual environment. Team learning really does mimic the real world, and that's why there's a large emphasis on teamwork in our program. We want you to develop the skills to lead team, to be an effective team member, and to determine how to delegate work amongst the team. So you'll need the team coach who will guide the team through the program and offer up a number of best practices. I want to get Ryan into the conversation on this one because I cannot emphasize enough just how key team is in our programs. And so, Ryan, I wonder if uh, in the first instance, you could tell us a little bit about the diversity at your team table by way of the backgrounds of your teammates, but then also what were some of those key takeaways from working so intensely with team? Yeah, that's a great question. And this was one of the big reasons I wanted to join this program. And, you know, for me, I work in finance and my day-to-day -day is always dealing with, you know, other people, clients, colleagues in finance. When you look at the team uh, structure in these programs, uh, on my team, we had a diverse uh, group of individuals. So we had a lawyer, we had a civil engineer, a lumber trader, we had someone in tech sales, and you could only imagine the different skill sets that each of us brought and you know learn, learn from each other. So having this uh, team setting allowed me to, you know, learn other skill sets, other leadership qualities, and allowed me to also bring uh, certain skill sets that I have that others can can uh, can take away as well. So I thought that, you know, Gloria, you nailed it. It, it really does mimic the, the real world. And, um, you know, you learn how to work with other individuals with diverse backgrounds, which will obviously have a major benefit when you take this back to your uh, to your field. All right, good stuff. I should mention also that if you have questions as we go along, please don't be shy. Just drop them into the Q&A chat and uh, Alex will be answering in real time or we'll post them to Ryan during the Q&A. So uh, please feel free to use that um, throughout the session. Uh, joining Queens means that you join a very powerful alumni network. Ryan mentioned that in his opening comments, just by way of the opportunity to network during the program. And so when you, when you consider where you do your MBA, think about not only who is going to be in that classroom with you as part of the learning journey, but for life, who's going to be part of that network as you move along into more influential and decision-making roles. And uh, that's a, a really key part of an EMBA journey and something that you really can't put a price tag on just by way of um, the individuals that you'll have an opportunity to, to meet with and learn with. So let's look at the executive MBA program in detail. Okay, this is our national EMBA program. It's a 16 month program. We have one intake a year and that's in August and I'll show you the schedule in just a moment. And it's really designed for working professionals. So you can be anywhere in Canada in this program and we'll um, invite you to be on campus twice here in Kingston and then one on an international campus when you turn an elective. The common denominator with everyone in our, in our EMBA programs is management experience. So whether it's managing people or managing projects. And you're going to see that as part of the admissions process where we really have a uh, a close look at what is your work experience, but in particular, what is that management experience? And we're um, very specific on that because the focus of EMBA programs at SNCC is peer learning. So we need people with those real life examples and stories to share in the classroom in order for that peer learning to occur. 
We know that when you're in our programs, it's going to be one of the busiest times in your career as you juggle work, life, and school. And so we provide a high degree of support to you throughout the entire EMBA, including uh, a dedicated program team that looks after all the operational details on a day-to-day -day basis, including posting all of your materials to a program portal where you can easily find them, download them, and carry on with your studies. Uh, project advisors that will guide you and help you keep within scope for two major projects in our programs. And then uh, a roster of experienced coaches that can support you along the way, including your team coach, a career coach if you're looking to make some career changes, a lifestyle coach, and executive coaches that are very focused on your leadership development. There are two projects that you will complete. One is an individual project, so you have a chance to really customize your executive MBA experience by either completing a management consulting project or a, a business case for an adventure. And then there's a team project uh, that uh, requires teams to go abroad, visit with a client, and come up with recommendations or solutions. And I'm going to have Ryan go into details on those projects in just a couple of minutes. With the national program, you will earn an elective at an international location. So every year we offer up two opportunities or two options, um, and you'll have a choice to pick one where you're spending time with other members of your class that have chosen that elective at a partner school. And the last couple of years, we have um, the options have been Asade in Barcelona and National University of Singapore. So we want you to have that true international experience where you're studying at that school, learning from professors who teach at that institution, and of course, have an opportunity to be on the ground really learning about the culture and understanding how to be more effective in that part of the world. And then of course, you have that broad alumni support for life as a graduate in the program. Now, this is a representation of the schedule of the class that started in August. The dates for next August have just been published on our website. So have a look there for the specifics. But I wanted to show you this just to give you a sense of how the program flows. You're on campus with us for two weeks, a little bit less than two weeks. It's 10 days in August. That's what we call opening session. So you're meeting all of your classmates here in Kingston, Ontario on the Queen's campus face-to-face. -face. And the first couple of days you're spending team building. Then you get into that flow of every other Friday, Saturday, where you are in your boardroom, whether it's a physical boardroom or one of the virtual boardrooms. And so maybe I'll just take a quick second to tell you where our boardrooms are located in Canada. We have boardrooms in Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, three locations in Toronto, downtown Toronto, Mississauga, and Markham. And then we have boardrooms in Kingston, Ottawa, and um, Montreal. Outside of that, we have those virtual boardroom spaces. The class returns to campus in February for a week, and that is a session designed around the theme of creativity and innovation. And then uh, it's every other Friday, Saturday until that October time frame. And you'll see that there's a lot of time blocked out there. Please don't panic. It's not the entire time that you are away. You're away for about two weeks in October, and it really will depend when the elective is taking place, and if you're tacking on travel with your client before or after that one week elective. So typically you're away for approximately two weeks in the October time frame. Now the EMBA Americas program is a little bit different. Now this is the program that Ryan is a graduate of. It's a dual degree. So you earn a Queen's MBA, and a Cornell MBA. And so it's really designed for those of you that want to work in the US, maybe you have a US client base or you work for a multinational. You're going to get more US context coming into that curriculum, given that you're going to have Queens professors teaching you and Cornell professors. You'll have a chance to develop networks on both sides of the border. You're sharing your classroom experience with students based in Canada, the US, but also South America. And you can see from that last sentence there that our emerging markets are Chile, Mexico, and Peru. So it's very much what I like to call a North-South Americas program, where you've got the influence and the context coming in from those American, or sorry, America's locations. You still have the high degree of support that I referenced earlier. 
You will have electives in this program where uh, one of your on-campus sessions, you'll have a chance to take two electives where you're really diving into courses that are of interest to you and gives you a chance to customize your EMBA experience. And this program is slightly longer at 17 months. And the schedule looks like this. Again, it's that combination of on-campus on sessions and boardroom locations where you've got those weeks blocked out. Keep in mind that it's going to rotate between either Kingston, Ithaca, or New York City. And you can see on the left there the index, uh, which is also found on the website. And then outside of the on-campus sessions, you're in class every other Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so having a look at the schedule is an important part of the decision making by way of what can you make work at that time in your career. All right, before we go on to that, let me just pause here. I want to get Ryan to jump in and talk about these projects. So lots of courses, you're going to take likely courses like accounting and economics and marketing. But then there's these two project courses, which really give students an opportunity to dive deeper into topics. And so Ryan, unless you've signed NDAs, are you able to share what you did for those two projects? Yeah, I, I can definitely uh, talk about them high level. Um, and I believe that the projects are similar in, in both programs, right, Gloria? They are identical, yeah. Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, the first one, which is the individual project, it's you have two options. You have one option is doing uh, management consulting. So uh, pairing up with a company, uh, you know, in Canada locally that uh, needs, you know, is looking to improve on certain aspects of their business. And this could be everything. And what we do is individually, we work with those companies using the coursework that we've been taught to help uh, find solutions for those problems. So that is the, the individual one that you start really kind of thinking about it in January and then it's due in by June. And then the neat thing about the individual project is once you, as Gloria said, you get paired up with an advisor who you meet occasionally to discuss and you know share best practices. And then once you finish the report by May or June, then you actually have to pitch that project. So you have uh, another advisor that the school links you up with, and then you have to do a presentation pitch to a new advisor, not the advisor that you are currently working with that has really no idea what you're going to present on. So that was really, uh, really neat and a great experience. So that is the individual project that really you start in the new year and finish by the summer. Then the, the, the second one is the global project. And the neat thing about this one within the Americas program is that it's really up to us to find a company and have them hire us to really, uh, you know, again, solve a problem that that company is looking for, but it can't be a company in Canada or the United States. It has to be a company overseas. It's up to us to, to get hired by that company. It's a 450 hour capstone consulting project that we're doing within our boardroom teams. And uh, we, we have to travel to that uh, to the specific country. And, 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 and really it's, it's up to us to you know what, find out what the company is looking to uh, improve on. And again, implement the concepts and, and the courses that we've learned throughout the program uh, to help solve uh, this specific problem. So just to give you a little bit of an example of what we did, and we did our, we actually did our travel already, which is uh, not many of our, of our cohort has yet, because we just finished classes two weeks ago. But my team, we went to, uh, we, we worked, so one of the, one of our teammates is a lawyer, and we did a company uh, from London, England, that is, uh, it's a networking company of, of law firms globally. So what these, this company does is essentially, if you're a Canadian law firm, and you're one of their clients, and you're working on a case, let's say in Germany, and you need, you know, you need help from a German law firm, 
and they're their clients, they help connect these two law firms to work on this specific case. And they're headquartered in London. So what we did was we have a team of five in Vancouver. Four of us traveled to London and Dublin in Ireland uh, in mid-September. And we met with the, the company. We met with an, a handful of their clients. And then we came back to Vancouver. We put everything, all our reports together. And then actually two of us went back to London at the end of October because this specific company wanted us to present our findings to the board of directors. And now coming back from resident, our last residential session in, in November, we are now putting the report together, working with our advisor and that final project, even though we're done classes, is due on March 1st. And that's really the last deliverable um, of, the, uh, of the course. So it's really unique. It allows you to travel with your team. Um, it allows you to, uh, you know, work with a company internationally, and it's uh, it's a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, one last thing I should mention is for the individual project, I only talked about the management consulting because that's what I did. But there is a second option as well, which is a new venture project, and that new venture project can be any new idea that you have that you want to launch into a business or Maybe you just want to, you know, share the idea. But to give you an example of some of what my cohorts did is some of the cohorts that did the new venture management project on the individual, they're actually going ahead and launching that new business in real world. So um, you have two avenues you can take for the individual management consulting, which is dealing with a problem with an existing company. Or, or going new venture project, which is a brand new idea that uh, that you have that maybe you do or you do not want to launch. It's it's completely up to you. So with that, uh, I'll pass it on over to you, Gloria. Thanks, Ryan. Very thorough, and I love your example. It sounds like a really cool uh, global project that you and your team are up to. So uh, that's that's terrific. Okay, by way of cost of these programs, you can see here uh, what they are: national at one hundred five. And the Americas at 158, remembering that it is a dual degree program, so you're earning two MBOs. Uh, typical payback is three to five years, and that comes to us from RBC, where the majority of our students are not only self-financing, but they're borrowing from RBC to pay their tuition, where they're uh, using a student line of credit that has been established uh, exclusively for us, and you draw your tuition payments down on it, and they tell us that the loans don't sit longer than three to five years, just to give you a sense of that rapid uh, payback on your investment. On our website, there's lots of different suggestions and ideas on financing the program. Uh, I mentioned financing through RBC. More detail is found on the website where you can reach out to the advisor who manages uh, this program. You can borrow $10,000 from your RRSP on an annual basis under a lifelong learning plan. So you're enrolled for two years. So that's $20,000 that you can uh, potentially draw from. Uh, nearly all of the tuition is eligible for the educational tax credit. So at year end, there is some tax incentive. And there is a great document that once you're working with Alex in the admissions process, she can send you called the Case for Corporate Sponsorship. Please note that it is different from what you will find on our website. This is a, a Word document that is very comprehensive and essentially designed for you to modify based on what you know will have the most impact when having a conversation with your employer. So I encourage you to consider having that conversation and keeping in mind that that project that Ryan just described, the individual project, is a great return on any investment the employer will make by way of committing that project to them because you can come up with new ideas, a recommendation, a solution. And we have seen alumni over the years uh, do some really terrific work with the projects. And then of course, scholarship opportunities um, where we list on our website major scholarships and their affiliated with the due date. All right, I'm gonna ask Alex Mundy to join us. Alex is our application advisor and she will talk through the application process. Hi, everybody. As Gloria mentioned, I'm Alex, and I'm an application advisor for both the Executive MBA National and America's programs. The sun has decided to shine right as I'm about to speak, which is wonderful. 
Um, I know I've seen some familiar names on here, so thanks for joining. Um, I may have met you already uh, through Zoom or on a phone call, um, but I'm here to just chat a little bit more about what the application process looks like. Um, it's really a simple process, and so I'll just highlight what those next steps can look like. Um, starting with the preliminary assessment. So you'll see on the slide here that the very first step is just getting in touch with somebody from Smith. Um, so that could be me, it could be my colleague, Nicole, uh, who is a recruitment advisor for these programs. And what we wanna do first and foremost is get a good sense of who you are, why you're interested in this program, what stage in your career you're at, and if this program is gonna be a good fit for you. And so to do that preliminary assessment, we really wanna see uh, your resume, your LinkedIn profile, um, or sorry, resume or LinkedIn profile, um, and ideally a copy of your transcripts, post-secondary transcripts. And that's going to give us a good sense of some of that information. Um, what we do at that stage is uh, if we feel that you're going to be a, a good fit to move forward with the application process, then you'll continue to work with me. Um, what we're looking for from both perspectives, from both programs, is we want to see students who have demonstrated that career progression. Um, we want to see at least eight to 10 years of work experience under your belt, and we also want to see um, evidence of management and leadership experience. And as Ryan and Gloria both highlighted, these programs are very diverse in terms of the industries that are represented. And so the commonality between students coming into this program is really gonna be found in that management experience, regardless of whether you're coming from engineering or law or medicine, uh, finance, um, really that's the thread that we're looking for. And so uh, after that preliminary assessment's done and, and we're moving you through the process, um, keep in mind there's no, no uh, fee to apply for the program. So it's an easy start that way. And then to complete your application profile, we're really looking for three elements. We wanna see references, um, ideally two professional references, a colleague and a superior. Um, we ask you some application questions. So we wanna to get to know you a little bit better, again, why you're interested in these programs. Um, and then we'd ask you to submit any official transcripts from post-secondary education. You'll notice under the requirements section, um, it says the executive assessment might be required. Um, so that's an assessment that's essentially it was created by uh, GMAC, um, who made the GMAT test, which often takes you know a few months to prepare for. The executive assessment is a very condensed version of that, so it takes maybe 30 hours to prepare for. That's required for students who uh, did not complete an undergraduate degree. So for the national program, if you didn't complete an undergraduate degree, don't let that stop you from getting in touch and, and applying. Um, we do accept students um, through that application process. We would just ask you to complete the executive assessment as part of your application. So that's for the national program. Keep in mind that for the Americas program, our dual degree program with Cornell, we do want to see an undergraduate degree uh, on your application profile. So that's one difference between um, the application processes for those two programs. Um, really after we complete your file, we would move you forward to an interview with one of our program directors and you would receive an admission decision shortly thereafter. So it does move pretty quickly. I would say on average, it can take maybe three weeks or so to complete your file. And both programs are rolling admissions programs, which means that you can really get in touch at any time. Um, for the next intake of the program. So keep in mind that the Americas program is the next one to start. That will start in June 2023, and the national program will start in August 2023. Um, so again, you can reach out to me anytime. Um, please feel free in the Q&A, because we don't have um, a, a chat, please reach out in the Q&A if you'd like to, me to get in touch, and I'm happy to reach out. Um, you can also reach out to me directly at alex.mundy at queensu.ca. And then, of course, on our website, there's lots of um, uh, links to get in touch with somebody from the School of Business as well. Back to you, Gloria. All right. Thanks, Alex. And Alex does a really terrific job of managing the portfolio of applications and is very hands-on. So she's going to guide you, give you feedback along the way, and essentially put you in the best uh, shape that you can be before it hits the admissions committee. So. Uh, just follow her lead, and before you know it, that application will come together quite nicely. 
All right, um, Ryan, I want to ask a question that I know is on the minds of many people, which is the whole balancing act, right? You've got a full-time career, you're busy at work, you've got personal commitments, and then you layer on top of it all this program, which on average is 20 to 25 hours a week. So I like to say that it's not for the faint of heart. You know, it's short-term pain for long-term gain. Um, but how how did you do it, balancing all of these priorities? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, e everyone's life and circumstances are different in this program, especially within your own teammates. Some of us have young children. Some of us have demanding more demanding jobs. Um, I think for me, the the best way to put it was I, I've been out of my undergrad. I got my undergrad in two thousand eight. So I have um, not been in school for, for almost 15 years before starting this program. And I think the biggest challenge for me was, you know, how am I going to uh, balance this uh, program along with my uh, right normal life? And I think as you go through the program, you realize that, um, you know, there are certain sacrifices that some of us have to make. Maybe you, you know, hang out with some friends less or whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, um, the way that I did it was that I, 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 I had a very, very strict schedule on when I was going to do the readings. And the professors, both at Queens and Cornell, were very, very supportive. There was a lot of support from my teammates as well uh, throughout the program. So it is you know, it is a lot of work. And especially if you're working full time, and, uh, you know, you have other things in your life. But Gloria, you said it best, it's short term pain for for long term gain. And, um, you know, you will be sacrificing your your some of your weekends and a lot of your evenings, a lot of late nights and early mornings, but uh, you'd be surprised how fast it goes by. Because I look back at the last 17, 18 months. And, um, you know, I, I, it went by very, very fast. So it's, it's definitely a lot of work, but it is also, um, it is manageable. It is very, and, and, and you have a lot of support from your teammates, from the professors. It's, uh, it, it, it was, it was a great experience. So I'm going to, I'm going to, try this question on you Ryan in the sense that you're just out of this so you know in fairness to you you haven't had that time yet to really pause and reflect but we call this program um it's a transformational change that people go through um you show up differently you add different value to your job to your organization etc what would you say was the biggest change for you having come through this program yeah, I would say for me, um, being able to think outside the box and looking at certain problems from a different angle. And I think that that was the main takeaway for me is being able to look at an issue at work and saying, okay, well, let's look at it at this angle and come to a solution and, you know, have that team team effort to to really you know come to that solution so i think thinking outside the box and thinking differently about certain situations was really the biggest takeaway for me and of course you know working with a, a diverse group of people and having people uh share their best practices uh that you would have never really thought of yourself um as I said in the beginning of this uh, webinar, like having a, a lawyer, a civil engineer, a lumber trader and tech sales um, and a finance guy, like we, we've had, we had a lot of different uh, discussions and we've had, you know, different ways to, to solve problems together. And it's, uh, it was a, it was a very unique and uh, a great experience for sure. And, you know, we, we always say throughout the program that we're trying to, you know, build a high performing team, right, with these diverse backgrounds. And I think that is the key is being able to transfer the skills 
and the qual the leadership qualities within this program and take it back to your field, whatever you do for work, and being able to function as a high performing team at your at your at your current employer. So that's really the the biggest takeaway, I think. Mm -hmm. wow. Good for you. Okay, so as we wrap things up and uh, let people carry on with their day, having come through this now, Ryan, and thinking back to when we were applying and thinking about this program, if there's one piece of advice that you could leave with our attendees, what would that piece of advice be? Yeah, I would say th three things come to mind for any advice for, for new students. The first one would be, and, and you mentioned this earlier, Gloria, the, you know, the access to the al alumni network. Um, I would say take full advantage of the tools and resources both Queens and Cornell provide. And speaking from my own experience being in the Americas program, you have access to the alumni network and the professors and the career coaches and all these resources of really one of the best schools in Canada and one of the Ivy League schools in the United States. So definitely the first piece of advice would be throughout the program, take advantage of these tools and resources. Uh, the second one would be, you know, a big reason why I went back to do my MBA was networking and to take advantage of, you know, not only networking and, and you know, throughout your own team in your in your home city, but with the rest of the cohort. And um, you showed the schedule uh, for both programs. So for the Americas, we have a handful of residential sessions. We went to uh, Kingston and Ithaca twice. We went to Tor downtown Toronto. Uh, the Queen has, Queens has a campus in downtown Toronto. And then we also went to New York City for the uh, Cornell Tech campus. Use these residential sessions to really connect with other members of the cohort uh, wherever they live throughout Canada, the United States, Mexico, or Latin America. And then the last piece of advice I would say is get to know the professors. Uh, both the professors at Queens and Cornell are so helpful, always accessible, and honestly, they're some of the best people I've ever met in my life. Um, I'm heading out to vacation. I'm heading out of country to, uh, to go on holidays for Christmas. And I actually just spoke to one of my professors last night, not even about coursework or anything. I just said, you know, give me three of your top favorite books. I want to, you know, I got time to read now. So he sent me a, a list of his favorite books and I'm going to order them on Amazon and read them during the Christmas holidays. But I would say those are the three big things is, uh, you know, take advantage of the tools and resources, networking and, and get to know the professors. Mm, very wise advice. Okay, super. Thanks for the advice. And thanks for joining us today, Ryan, and sharing your perspective. We learned a great deal from you and really appreciate the enthusiasm that you have for, for the program. Thanks so much for having me. All right. all right. So thanks to all of you for joining us. I hope this webinar has been not only informative, but inspirational. And that you do reach out to us if you haven't already and allow us to have a look at your resume, complete that preliminary assessment. And uh, hopefully I'll see you all here at Smith School of Business one day real soon. Bye for now. <laughs>